The first thing I want to do is take you through the most important buttons on the camera body. The first is the shutter button, which has two phases. The first is a halfway depression, and the second is a full depression that will actually take the picture. It will greatly help to train your finger to feel where that first depression point is. It's a very springy type feeling when you push down, and that will engage the camera's focusing and metering. If you push past that point, it'll actually take the picture. Training your finger to feel the sensitivity between those two positions will allow you to get focus lock without accidentally taking the picture, and this has many applications. The second most important button is the main selection dial, and I also call this your primary selector. It's located directly behind the shutter button, and you will notice that it rotates to the right or left. The third most important selector is on the back of the camera. You can't miss it. It's a large wheel, and this is called the quick selection dial by Canon, but I call this the secondary selector for a very good reason, which I will show you later. This large wheel also has a touch sensitive control dial, which is very handy when shooting video. In the center of the secondary selector, we have the set button, which I like to think of as the return or the enter button is on a computer. It is going to allow you to select different features from the menu and is very handy. You're going to be using it a lot. I have also customized mine to act as the zoom button because I prefer to use my right thumb. The next most important dial I would say is the mode dial. This allows you to control which mode you are shooting in. And in order to rotate it, you will have to push that little button in the middle because otherwise it will stay locked. This was done by Canon to prevent accidental bumping of the mode dial. Out of all the buttons on the camera, you are going to use these four more than anything. I can promise you that. Let's look at some of the other secondary camera buttons so you know what they are and what they do. Next we have the MFN button, which stands for multi-function button. It is most useful when toggling through your focusing clusters, and I'll have to show you a different video later that describes how to use it. The button closest to where your right ring finger would rest is called the depth of field preview button. Its function is to close the lens blades down so you can see the depth of field in real time. But to be honest, I've customized mine to allow me to jump quickly between the JPEG and RAW formats. If you look on the opposite side of the lens, if you look halfway down, there is going to be an oval button. That oval button is your lens release, and you're going to press this every time you take a lens off of your camera body. Just to the left of the viewfinder, we have the power switch, and just below the power switch, we have the menu and info buttons. The menu button is a very important button and you are going to be using it often. It will allow you to access the menu of the camera and tweak its settings. I have a whole portion of this video dedicated to the menu. And I've also set up a special menu on the Canon 5D Mark III Crash Course DVD as a way for you to access any item you want to know about. It is going to save you a ton of time and is a fantastic reference tool. Push the info button repeatedly to cycle through different types of shooting, live view, and playback information. I use it most when inspecting images to check histograms or other exposure data. Just below the menu button, we have the creative photo button. It will allow you to access picture styles, multiple exposure, or HDR features. When playing back images, it will also allow you to compare two images side by side. The rate button will allow you to designate a one to five star rating to your images, which is compatible with certain types of image viewing software. This button can also be configured to act as a quick protect image button. Pressing the zoom button and rotating the primary selector wheel will allow you to zoom in or out of your monitor when inspecting images or when working in live view. To review images after shooting, press your playback button and you can scroll through your images using your secondary selector wheel or you can jump through images using your primary selector wheel. The button with the garbage can icon is obviously the delete button and you're going to be using this to delete any images you don't like. 
Just below the secondary selector wheel, we have the lock switch. I never use this, but its purpose is to prevent the exposure settings from changing if you were to accidentally bump it. Next, we have the Q button, which will allow you to select and make changes to your camera settings on your main screen, as well as access different control settings in live view or silent control. Just above the Q button, we have the joystick, and it has many functions, including uh, moving your focusing squares, reviewing images while zoomed in, or even navigating through the menus. You can even push the joystick into the camera to act as a secondary enter or select button. To the right of the viewfinder, we have the live view video record button. If you're in any regular photo shooting mode, this button will activate live view. If you're in the video mode, pushing this button will start and stop video recording. The tiny little wheel you see on the right of the viewfinder is called the diopter adjuster, which will allow you to change the focus of the glass in the viewfinder. This is very useful for those photographers who use prescription eyeglasses. Near the top right of the camera, where your thumb would rest, we have three little black buttons. The first is the autofocus on button, which can be customized in different ways to help with focus. It is your primary focus button while in live view. The middle button is your exposure lock button or your flash exposure lock button if you are using a flash. This button allows you to lock your exposure, recompose, and take the picture without the camera re-metering the scene. The third button is your autofocus point selector. It allows you to activate your autofocus selector and choose which focus cluster you want. I have another lesson on the DVD which will explain focusing systems in much greater detail. If we look at the top of the camera, we see that we have four buttons in an LCD display. The LCD will show critical shooting information, such as your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, things of that nature, and you're going to be looking at it quite a bit. The four buttons are simple. The smaller one on the far right is the LCD light. If it's dark outside, hey, you know you're going to want some light, press this so you can see what's going on. The three remaining buttons help change your camera settings. Going left to right, the first button allows you to control metering and white balance. The second button controls autofocus type and shooting drive, and the third button controls your ISO and flash exposure compensation. Now you'll notice that each button has two icons. The left icon will be controlled with the primary selector wheel and the right icon with a secondary selector wheel. Let's put this into practice. Say we're shooting and we want to lower our ISO setting. We will push the ISO button and then use the primary selector wheel to change it. To change white balance, we would push the first button and then rotate the secondary selector wheel. On the left side of the camera, there are two rubber covers. Underneath those covers, we have six different cable ports. On the top left, we have a microphone port, which you are going to need to use if you want to record any kind of good quality audio with your videos. The middle left is a flash sync cable port. This is very useful when triggering studio strobes. On the bottom left, we have a port for a wired remote control, which you can purchase separately. On the top right, we have a headphone jack that will allow you to monitor your audio as it is recording, as well as during playback. The right middle cable is the audio video cable, and this came with the camera. This will allow you to play images and movies on non-high definition televisions. On the bottom right, we have a mini HDMI port, and this will allow you to play back movies and stills on high definition televisions. Before you run out and spend 80 bucks on one of these at an expensive electronics store, I would highly recommend looking on eBay first. So that's an overview of the camera. We've gone over all the buttons and have briefly covered what they do. I promise that if you practice, the day will come that you feel you have complete control over your camera and it feels really good to know how to do everything. There may come a time where you forget which button does what, and that's okay. Just come on back and we'll go over it again.
For the rest of the DVD, we will go through each of these settings individually so you know what they are, what they do, and how to use them. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new DVD, Canon 5D Mark III Crash Course. It's made for beginners to advanced shooters and will teach you the most important things you need to know about your camera for stills and video. You can order it from the following link.